Termite mound, watching us drive past them like dum-dums. Hey, David. <laughs> there they are. Hi, girls. And we'll see if we can get a better shot. But this is actually a nice little spot that they've got here. Hello, young lady. Ooh, I'm just going to... Sorry, my car's making a strange noise. David, do you mind if I start it very quickly just to... I'm just going to quickly reposition my... Wendy's creaking. And I, I think it's just because she hasn't found a good piece of ground to settle on. There we go. That's better. She's not making too much noise now. They haven't moved far. So I think that they probably move closer. There's a pan just on my right. So I think from where they were laying, I think they came to have a, a drink, and now they're back. Oh, here we go. Oh, I'm sure you've missed that beautiful grin. And they look fairly fat. They don't look, um, they don't look thin. There's an injury on amber eyes. You can see just at the top of her leg there, there's a whole lot of flies gathering around. So that looks like a little wound of some sort. Let's reposition. I think let's go around the other side. We might get a clearer view. I'm going to just sneak through over here very quickly. So it seems as though these two haven't joined up with the rest of the pride, but I don't think that they're far. I think the other girls are in the drainage system. Ow! Just be careful of that. We've got a little quarry tree. Let's have one very quick look over here and see if it's any better. Otherwise, we'll go back. Ah, just so I can show you that Amber Eyes is indeed here. Hello, girl. There she is. We'll have a very quick look. Hello. Fast asleep. Not quite ready to get up yet. Now, the sun, as you saw when you looked at the sunset with Tristan, is starting to dip down below the horizon, and sadly, that means and it's not going to be for very much longer that Jamie can stay out and about walking around. So I think let's go across to her so that she can say a farewell to all of you. And we do. Our lovely ladies have removed themselves as they were comfortably sat upon a termite mound. And now they've come below to those little pans to have a drink. Now, they could have already had a drink earlier when they moved the first time. And I don't blame them if they're going to have to have a second drink today. It is, it's been exceptionally hot. Now, I just got, I just heard, it sounds like somewhere in Biffle's Hook, I think in the northeastern corner, it sounds like the Torchwood Pride is around, which is good news, because they called it in, and initially I thought that it was the rest of the Nkahumas with the Cubs. So, that's great news. And I just want to say, of course, a big welcome to the Annalise School. Now, you've just met Shungile and Hosanna, and now, of course, you've met some of our favorite lions. So my name is Taylor McCurdy, and on camera is David. So these lions are very special lions. They are my favorite pride of lions that I've ever come across. They are so wonderful. And the youngest lioness that we saw that was still drinking water, that's one of the youngest lions of the Nkuhuma pride. And then the other lioness, who is hiding behind the, the tree, and hopefully we'll be able to see her face a bit better at some point, her, she goes by the name of Amber Eyes, because her eyes are a lovely sort of reddish-brown color. She's really beautiful. But we've still got three lionesses that are missing, as well as a total of six cubs. But I'm so scared to even call them cubs now, because we haven't seen them for quite some time, and I suspect that they'll be quite big, that they've grown into um, not big, strong lions like these two, but they won't be little tiny fluff balls anymore. So remember, if you've got any questions about lions, I'd love to hear from all of you so you can send them through. Remember, this is the biggest cat that we have in Africa and the most powerful cat. And I hope that the Nkuhumas make their return and decide to stay and at least until tomorrow morning, and hopefully we'll see them all together. I must tell you, I have a favorite little lion, and we've, she doesn't really have a name, but she has a floppy ear, because she got something called mange. So mange is a parasite that feeds on the hair of the animals, and basically what happens is that they eat the hair, and it's normally when they get a little bit sick or their immune system is weakened that mange will come about, but it causes the hair to fall out, and she got it quite badly, but she's a strong fighter. And because she got that mange, her ear actually swelled up and flopped. 
you know, it's quite easy to tell her apart from the others, but I don't know if that's going to be the case when we see them again. Now, Kate, you're wondering uh, how, how long can lions, that was correct, how long can lions go without food for? Quite a long time. You won't believe it. Much longer than you and I could go without food. So what happens is that they're opportunistic feeders. So that means that basically they don't always catch something. They're not the greatest hunters. And ooh, let me just quickly turn this radio down. Sorry. Ooh, everyone's fine. They're very excited that there's lots of lions around. So basically, if they catch something, hopefully they catch something nice and big like a buffalo if the whole pride is together because that means that they will eat for a couple of days. But if they only catch something small like an impala, which is quite a small antelope, then they'll probably need to eat again the next day, especially when it's the entire pride together. So I reckon every three to four days or so, it'll be a good opportunity for these lions to eat. Whether they'll catch something or not, I'm, I'm not certain. It's difficult for them now because there is lots of grass around, so it means that all the animals have split up. And they love to eat buffalo. That seems to be their favorite animal to catch. But there are not many buffalo around at the moment. They have moved off into other areas. But typically we should start to see them again during the winter months. Look at that. Isn't that lovely? And one of the reasons why they are so successful, and they're the only, really the only social cats out here, is because they do this. They love each other, they groom each other, they spend time building and strengthening bonds between the different members in a pride. Now going back to, of course, talking about lions catching things, Donovan, you're wondering, do they hunt in the morning or do they hunt at night? And the answer to that is actually any time of the day. So if you've ever heard that lions only like to hunt when it's cool, that's, that's true. They'd prefer it. But when you are out here in Africa, it can be very harsh. And you can't really be picky and choose when you'd like to hunt. So even as these two are laying here next to each other, if something were to come across, they might try and catch it. Hello, Octavia. Now you were wondering, and unfortunately it's sad we don't have a male here to show you, but you were wondering why do males have manes and females don't? So one of the most important things about male lions needing to have a mane is that that mane covers the throat as well as the heart when it gets big enough and it protects vital organs because those males will often fight with each other for these prides of females. It looks like this frog that is shouting it had caught the attention. Yeah then? looks like she's listening to those frogs that are making that all that noise and then the other thing is of course a big mane displays dominance so, and normally as they get older it's not a given though sometimes you get lions with blonde manes but sometimes they go nice and dark too and they love that but we're going to stick with these lions it seems as though they're just starting to wake up as the day is cooling down but we're going to go across to Tristan now and have a look at some other sleepy cats <laughs> 